Hey everybody, it's Sim here from The Fusing Shop. And um, in today's video, well, first of all, I have a huge upgrade. I actually got a GoPro. Um, so I'm hoping to use this for additional camera angles for my uh, videos moving forward. So I'm really excited about this. And um, yeah, it's great. I can put this on anything and make it go anywhere, which is really awesome. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting some different views and angles for my videos. Um, so very excited about that. And today's video, uh, I figured we'd just do something very simple uh, with making some basic pendants. Now I've showed a whole bunch of pendants before, but those are a little, little complicated. And I just want to show like your basic beginner pendants in this video. So um, pretty much I pulled out some striking color, striking colored rod. And this, what a striking color does is it changes color depending on your flame chemistry. So depending if you're using an oxidizing or reducing or neutral flame, this rod, even though it looks kind of blackish right now, will actually change colors. And they have these tags at the end that tell you what happened and how to work the glass and um, uh, to get the effect that you want. So this is supposed to actually make different blues and greens. Um, so that's one glass we're gonna use to make a pendant. Another one is this, uh, and these are all glass alchemy glass. I really like their stuff. Uh, this one is called Passion, or might be Passion something else. I don't know, I, the tag got burnt. Uh, but this one also, you see it looks red here, but you can see at the end where it's been worked in the fire that it actually changes colors and it's like purple and blue and different kind of colors down there. So we're gonna use that one. And uh, for our last one, we're just gonna use a plain old cobalt blue. And this does not change color. This will stay blue, which is great if that's the effect you're going for. So we're gonna use three, these three rods and make the three different style pendants with the three of them. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, and we are ready to go for this demo. We don't need that much stuff. Um, I'm just gonna use my little round of cobalt blue to make the first payment. I'm gonna attach these two pieces together. All you do is get those ends nice and hot to attach them together, smush them together in the flame. And this is also great practice for learning how to do your welds and how to um, make attachments to other pieces of glass. Rotate in the fire, make sure you get enough heat in there. And you want the line in the glass that you see to disappear so it forms one nice solid piece of glass. When it starts to cool, you could pull it out and let that glass flow. Pull, 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 pull. Turn your hands to keep the rod on center. And then you have uh, one nice solid rod. For pendant number one, I'm just gonna prepare our punty. And I like to always clear off the ends of my punties. This way to get rid of any bubbles or any other crud that's on the end. This is a very simple pendant to make. The only thing you need to do is start with a gather and rotate your glass in the flame. And you'll start to see the glass start to gather in on itself. So just keep the tip in the flame and rotate the glass in one place. You also want to keep your glass angled down towards your table. This way the glass will, the gravity will force the glass to ball up on itself. So make sure you're doing that. Uh, when it gets to a size you want, make your uh, rod like parallel with your table. And now I'm going to punty up because it's the size that I like it to be. So I'm just gonna attach Pundi. And this is gonna be a cold seal Pundi. So again, just get that rod nice and hot. And I like to sharpen my Puntis a little bit. This way, again, it leaves as little glass as possible when you go to detach them. So touch the two together. I do it out of the flame. This way it doesn't make a hot seal and rotate to make sure your pendant stays on center. 
that uh, the Demium uh, lens fell off there. And while I'm fixing it, uh, don't forget to leave a comment on the video if you enjoy it. And I'm just showing that I'm going to be making a flame cut right there on the rod. And that's the glass that I'm going to be using to form my loop. So there are many different ways to form, you know, loops on your pendants. I like to stretch the glass out and make sure you pull it out enough that you can make a um, loop the glass back to the back of the pendant and that it's thick enough that it's um, going to be okay if it gets dropped. So just take your tweezers and bend that loop around. It doesn't need to be molten hot, just hot enough to that the glass is moving. And I'm going to tack weld it to the back of the pendant. You can see there it's tacked on the back. And that'll be enough to hold it in place for now. And next step is to make that into a hot seal. And I'm taking out my reamer to also round out the hole. It's great to use the reamer to make round holes. It makes it like really perfectly round, which is awesome. So sometimes if the hole closes up a little bit, I like to use my tungsten because it's very small and thin and I can get it in there and just extend that hole. So just poke it through there and make that hole a little bit bigger so you can fit the reamer in. And when you go to ream, you want to ream from both sides. This way the hole is even. And if your uh, pendant uh, loop is not, um, if the glass is like thicker or thinner in one area, you could heat and use gravity to move it around and help even out the glass. Okay, I'm going to take the tweezers and crack off that cold seal. And just fire polish the bottom. You always want to fire polish whenever you take off a cold seal because it always leaves a little bit of extra glass on there. And even if you don't see it on there, you could very easily feel it with your finger when you run your uh, fingertip across it. And that's what that pendant looks like. That's going to go in the kiln now. And we're going to start working on pendant number two. Pendant number two is very similar to the first one that we made. Uh, clean off your rod, make sure you get rid of any dust or any other debris that's on there. Let's start with making that gather. Again, put that tip in the flame. And rotate it. Rotate that glass. Again, elbows down position, meaning that the end of your rod is facing your work, work table. I like to rotate the glass towards myself. I find that to be easier. Uh, you can rotate whichever direction you prefer, whatever you're comfortable with. There's no right or wrong way to, uh, to rotate. So just get, keep that tip in the flame and let gravity do its thing and just let that glass ball up. Okay, so I'm gonna be making a little bit bigger gather here. So again, just keep rotating your glass in the flame and that gather will just get bigger and bigger on its own. And it's a very relaxing experience as you just watch the glass start to form slowly in the flame. It's just a very beautiful and peaceful experience that I recommend everyone try. So if you're interested in learning about glass blowing and you live in the New Jersey, New York area, um, look us up. We are in Edison, New Jersey, and we, uh, you know, I'll schedule lessons to fit around your schedule and come melt some glass with me. I'd love to have you guys come by. So right now I'm just checking the size of the pendant to see if everything looks good. That's what the striking color looks like. You can see that that red is turning into like blue or grayish kind of colors. 
So again, when you use the striking colors, it makes you get so many different colors out of one rod, which um, I just love that effect. I just love that effect when you know you have, and they all like mesh beautifully together. And the whole point of this video is to make again beginner style pendants. So using one rod is the way to go for any beginner project. And these come out beautiful and they're awesome and it's just such a cool thing to have something that you made with your own hands that you can, you know, wear and show other people. And they're really nice conversational pieces, like things that you make. People will be like, wow, where did you get that from? Be like, yeah, man, I made that uh, with my own two hands. I'd be like, wow, man, you're so awesome. Where can I do that? And then you'll tell them, hey, check out the fusing shop. Anyway, so um, here I'm getting ready to pull down the bottom of this pendant. So I'm heating up that punty, sharpening up that tip, making it nice and pointy. Heat up the bottom and get that like, you want to put some good heat into that because you want to pull that out. So make sure your punty is a little bit warm. This way it sticks to the bottom of that glass. Touch them in the flame. And then, depending on how thick you want to make this pull, will determine how fast you're going to do it. So I made mine. I made my pull relatively quick, and I wound up with like a little uh, thin stem on the bottom of my pendant. And you could do more than one pull if you want to pull some more glass out. Don't be bashful. Again, this is your art. You make it the way that looks good to you. So um, just go in. Melt, pull it out, rotate so you keep it on center, and you will be good to go. And here again, I'm going to pull out glass to make the loop. So figure out where you want a flame cut. If you want a thicker loop, pull slowly. If you want a thinner loop, you can pull quicker. And this, I think, is called making a shepherd's hook when you make it like kind of looks like a question mark. And that just makes sure that you have enough glass to complete the loop and tack weld it to the back. Just take those tweezers, bend it around. You don't have to do everything in one motion. You can take your time and move the glass a little bit. You don't want to fight the glass because you can break off your cold seal, which is not something you want to do right now. So you want that cold seal to come off when you're ready for it to come off. So be gentle with the glass. And don't try to muscle it. It's not a good idea to try to muscle anything with glass. And you don't need to be a glass blower to, to know that fact. So take your time. Be patient. You, you know, flow with the glass. Let the glass flow with you. And just relax. You know, do your thing. Let the glass do its thing. Get the tongue thing pick in there to help open up that hole a little bit. Just big enough to get my reamer in. And make sure you turn that tacked weld into a nice hot seal. Make sure that loop is nice and strong. Don't want to have weak loops on your pendants. That is what's holding uh, your beautiful artwork in place. So make sure that you do it the right way. Take your time. Even out the glass. Make the, you know, make the hole nice and round. This way you can fit a nice little chain through. And there you go, go with the reamer, spin the reamer as you go in. Go in both sides, tap off that cold seal, boom, fire polish the bottom, I'm showing it to the GoPro, uh, and here, showing it to the other camera now. So cool. Striking glass people, that's pretty amazing. All right, that one's going in the kiln. And now we are off to pendant number three. See, it's a little bit cold in my shop today as I'm talking through this video. But uh, working near the torch, it does uh, give off a lot of heat, so you do get pretty warm. Clean off that glass, make sure there's no dust or any other uh, schmutz on there. I think this is the uh, penumbra from um, which glass is it? I think it is uh, Glass Alchemy. No, 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 no. I think this is North Star Glass. 
they have a lot of really cool striking colors. And this one, it looks black, but when you uh, start working in the flame, it turns all really cool colors. It kind of turns like a silvery blue and tan, and you know, you have to really look at the tags um, when you work with striking colors, because some do strike in the kiln rather than in the flame. Like there's one, um, I think it's a North Star color called um, pomegranate, and when you use it in the flame, it turns clear. So it looks like, you know, you're working with another clear rod. But when you put it in the kiln and you strike it in the kiln, it actually turns a bright red. So just something to keep in mind that there are certain co um, certain colors that strike in the kiln and certain ones that strike in the flame. So just, just things to keep in mind as you're working with different, uh, different colored rods. All right, so here I here we go. Oh, you can see how that's coming out already. Rather than black, it's kind of like grayish, bluish. And um, I'm starting with the gather again. Again, all three of these pendants start exactly the same way. You make a gather, and then you uh, work the glass from there. So these are all beginner things. One of the th first things I learned to do is gather up glass, and that's why I think it's just a great starting place for any beginner. There's so much you could do when you um, with that gather. You can make marbles with the gather. You could start to uh, make little figurines. Like turtles are very popular for people to make. Uh, implosions. Um, just tons and tons of stuff you can make with that gather. So this this pendant, I I had a different concept in mind. When I originally went into it, I wanted to start with like a, a barrel kind of shape and then pull that out into like a pointy little spike. Uh, but I decided to change it up a little bit. Let me see here, I'm getting ready to do the pull. But I decided to go for an even simpler pendant than the one I was going to do for this demo. So right now I'm just pondering and thinking, hmm, how should I uh, go about making this pendant? And I decided to just switch things up completely. You know, scrap the barrel design that I was going to go for originally. Let's just work on that gather, round that glass out again. And in one minute I'm going to pick up my smashers and I'm going to smash that glass into the into a lollipop. And actually, I think this was my favorite one that I made um, in this set. It just came out like really, really cool. So just grab your smashers, just quickly smash that glass down, get a nice round lollipop. Looks really yummy, but don't try to lick it because you'll get, uh, get a nice uh, crazy burn on your tongue. So now I'm going to go in for that cold seal. Because pretty much the pendant is done. All I'm going to do now is uh, punty up and add the loop to the other side once I get the punty to attach. Sometimes these cold seals take more than one attempt. Again, be patient. Take your time. There is no rush. If your punty falls off, then just reattach it. See, mine already broke off two times. That's all right. Just be patient. Reattach. Make sure you're on center. And you want to keep the glass in one spot right now as you're heating it up. This way you got a nice even heat in there. When you go for your pull, uh, the glass will pull out nice and even. And this one I pulled a little bit to the front because I wanted to get the loop more centered right, right out of the gate. So I pulled the glass towards the front and now I'm going to fold it uh, towards the back of the pendant now. Just working that glass, flame cut the rod. Now we're going to take our tweezers again and just tack weld that loop to the back of the pendant. There we go, get some heat in there. Oop, drop the reamer. And ream out both sides. Make sure you get a hot seal before you um, put this in the kiln. And this one just sealed up really nice and easy. 
Now I'm going to take my tweezers, pop off that cold seal, flame polish the bottom, I will show it to the GoPro in a second, bear with me. And there we go, really awesome little pendant. Can make this pendant in just a few minutes.